So as I get around the world and see startups, I'm trying to see some that help developers build companies and build features. And Hubble Vision does just that. And we'll get into how they do that and what they do for developers. But if you're a developer, you'll probably want to watch this. Who are you? My name's Cole Rutias. I'm founder and CEO of Double Vision. Before Double Vision, I created an app called MyPad, which download, was downloaded over 60 million times. Actually, I think we're coming up on 70 million this month. And uh, before that, I started another company called Radius Intelligence, serial entrepreneur, and working to help other developers now with Double Vision. Very cool. So uh, what, what kinds of things does Double Vision do? Well, for developers, because you, you do quite a few other little things. There, there are a number of features to the SDK, but um, the bigger problem that we wanted to solve was really helping users go between their different devices. Dropbox is a phenomenal product for helping people share documents, but for the most part, you don't really live in the world of documents anymore. It's websites, mobile apps, and how do you switch between those? Every time you open an app, it treats you like a brand new user. You don't know what your friends were doing. You don't know who's downloaded the app since anything. And even switching from their website to download or open the mobile app, you're like a brand new user. And so that experience, I thought, needed a lot of work. And so we created Double Vision to help developers span and, and easily create multi-screen experiences um, that make their, their applications more immersive and, and their devices and their users' devices more intelligent so that they can take into account what the user is doing and where they are, sensors in the device, et cetera. And I, I assume your core developer user base is mostly iOS and maybe Macintosh or maybe web or something like that, right? Uh, web developers that have a mobile product or certainly mobile only developers, that is a, a pretty common saying these days. However, for the most part, all these developers share their applications or they want their users to share their applications through non-mobile only websites. So with MyPad, we had millions of users accessing us from the web even though we were a mobile only product. And so our product helps developers take advantage of those users and build a more cohesive experience with their users. And you don't have Android yet, so right now you're focusing on iOS. Uh, well, one of our tools is, is based for the web um, and it actually can, can be integrated with the Android product very easily. Okay. So uh, why, do we, why does a developer need you? Because you're not a programming language, you're an SDK <laughs> that adds on fe you know, basically features that I don't have to code by right. myself. Right, so uh, as a developer, uh, excuse me, when we were developing products, we saw a lot of SDKs come across our desk or people were constantly asking me to put our SDK into their product. There's a lot of SDK fatigue. People don't like that word anymore. It's a scary word. So. What? SDK for the, <laughs> sorry, I mean, software I developer every, kit. Everybody watching this is a developer, so software developer kit. Yeah, software but, developer kit. Yes. Yeah. Um, Basically, so a, 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 a library that gets put into their native application. Uh, you know, there are actually SDKs just for catching crashes, which was Crashlytics that um, Twitter bought and a number of others. Uh, and so developers don't like putting things into their app because they don't know how it's going to affect it. And so actually the, the first tool that we built, a send a phone button, which literally enables a developer to press, excuse me, put a button on their website that's analogous to the like button or tweet button um, that allows them to send whatever that piece of content is to the user's mobile device through their application without any SDK in their native application. In about 10 minutes, they can integrate this button on their website and turn their web visitors into actual mobile users or mobile downloads. Got it. Give me a taste of what other kinds of things developer, developers would come to your SDK to include in their apps. <laughs> or maybe, and maybe should we show them what it does? We, we can jump right into it. I can yeah. show you um, how we've built a, a number of examples of the technology. Um, but from a higher level, what we're trying to do is um, enable developers to build applications that take advantage of the multiple screens at their disposal. I have my phone, I tend, you know, you have your iPhone sitting right there. When I'm, we're talking about things or I want to show you something, 
it's almost impossible for us to get something from one device to the next. Mm -hmm. Emailing yourself is kind of the most common solution and uh, I get sort of goosebumps every time I hear that because it's, I mean, it's 2014. I think uh, Demolition Man predicted <laughs> that we have hovering cars and all sorts of good stuff by now. Yeah. And yet we still can't send things to our phone easily. So yeah, can we uh, see it and get a taste of uh, what Absolutely. kinds of things you offer people? Sure. So everyone's familiar with Facebook. Start out on a website, although with everyone being familiar. Um, as you know, when you go to a different device, you tend to get a totally different experience. However, in our particular case, you go to someone's profile, for example. Tina's. Tina's profile. And as soon as you open, if you don't have the app open, it'll ask you whether you want to synchronize with the website you're on. Okay. If you don't, of course, you can leave your phone in your pocket. But if you do, it automatically syncs you back up to where you were on the website. Got it. Now, developers, all we're doing is providing the piping. This is an example of how a developer would keep the user in sync, literally, by showing a mirrored experience. We do that by default for any developer that adds our technology. In about 10 minutes, um, you can build a, a true multi-screen experience by adding our SDK. Um, however, if a developer wants to do something more immersive, um, we've- And this works on any website, right? Not just Facebook, right? Absolutely. So if I wanted to sync up two web pages- Absolutely. Um, I would do that. It works with Android or anything. And what we've provided here is actually a secondary experience where you can see her profile here in the background, but without touching my phone, it's automatically cycling through photos, related content of her, yep. um, as opposed to just leaving my phone in my pocket. If I go to someone else's profile, it'll then automatically synchronize to start showing me photos from her profile. So this or, is algorithmic uh, mirroring. This, this is not just a web page. It's, it, no, no. this is connecting to our SDK. Our SDK is then deciding what to do. This is where the developer comes in to say, no, I don't want to mirror the experience. I want to show related content. Yep. Or I want to show um, something else. And, could, and you, could you start up both screens to a game or something Absolutely, like that? absolutely. So you can, now, now you can see how you would use it to hook up a game and start, start Absolutely, it could be, so the, yeah. the framework that we've built it on is an XMPP framework. It's usually used yeah. for real-time communication. But this is just one little taste of what's in the tool Absolutely, bag, right? it can be used So for, give me some more taste, <laughs> just well, taste. The, the, the big does. one that developers have been really excited about is you're on a computer, you got there, somehow, right? Yeah. <laughs> Usually a link through Facebook, ironically. Um, and let's just say you get to uh, an app developer's website, for example, uh, I think Discover Circle. Circle's a great app for uh, sort of location-based social networking. Yep. So when you go to the website on your computer, your phone takes you straight to the app store. Oh, that's cool. And so a lot of developers have been very excited about that streamlining the download process. Um, helping to drive more downloads by automatically pushing the content to the related screens. And that'll happen on the iPhone, you know, the iPad, however many other devices the user has to optimize that experience for the user. Okay. And if the user already has the Circle app, of course it can launch the app, it can trigger yep. a deep link, whatever they want. Okay. What other kinds of things do you do? So we really wanted to um, enable the developers to, to do multi-screen experiences the, like the ones that we've just shown. Okay. Um, and so one of the big ones, so I, I mentioned um, the ability to trigger, excuse me, trigger downloads from, uh, or trigger experiences from the web. So this is actually the new version of the MyPad website um, that's much more visual. I'm reading an article here from the Huffington Post well, through the Double Vision SDK, I can press this send a phone button here. Yep. This requires no native SDK in the MyPad app or in the native application, but in doing so, it'll actually trigger a push notification. So I just press the button and it just asks me whether or not I want, oh, I got another notification, <laughs> if I want to sync with the computer. Yep. And so if I do so, um, it'll of course open to the same screen that I was looking at on the computer. Got it. And so that requires nothing from the developer to integrate the native SDK. We wanted 
to provide that functionality without requiring an extra SDK. Of course, if a developer wants to create a more immersive experience where uh, users are literally sharing the screens with each other, then they do require our SDK, but yeah. they get a whole bunch of other cool stuff with that, like real-time chat, so you can actually chat with your other users. Can uh, we see that? Or? Absolutely. So, uh, just going to the double vision uh, example application. So we're actually launching double vision as, let's just go to You can just leave it down here. Okay. okay. So, just starting on, I hit enter, right? There we go. So just starting on Facebook, the idea is that you can be, this can be any app. Without interfering with the UI or adding an extra menu, we provide a little head that the user can move around so that they can decide if it's up, down, wherever. Now that looks like stays. a Facebook chat head, uh, <laughs> but this is actually coming from you. This is separate. However, okay. it is connecting to Facebook chat. We wanted to provide developers with the best way to communicate with their users and their users' friends that are mm -hmm. not necessarily app users already. Yep. So I'm able to message my friend just say, are we having coffee later? And in doing so, the message will actually go through Facebook chat. They can be on Facebook's website and their mobile app, wherever they're using Facebook. And I'll get a message that says, would you like to chat? Um, and it'll say that the message was sent, in our case, from the Double Vision app. But if it's integrated into Angry Birds or whatever, it would say sent from Angry Birds. Cool. How much does this cost to put in now? Free. So how do you guys get paid? <laughs> uh, so we're I never trust anybody who's free because, <laughs> because uh, you, you, you know if you're free, uh, you're the product that's being sold somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, not exactly. Um, so we wanted to provide um, the best tools for developers, and ultimately we'll generate revenue by helping drive downloads and helping developers reach other users that so maybe like are not. Model. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and so what um, what we're able to provide in the meantime, though, is this great functionality for free without causing a whole lot of effort for the developer to, to add a lot of features that, that should be available in most apps but aren't today. Yeah. And so this helps. The idea was to help developers create a more immersive experience very quickly and easily without having to understand or be experts in mobile or also desktop and how those two work together because most developers aren't. It could just be mom and pop or you know a little kid that's How do you add this stuff garage. to your uh, app? I, uh, obviously, uh, if you're building iOS, you're on Objective-C. Mm -hmm. uh, building an Objective-C app, uh, yep. what do I have to include in my... Uh, so my it's, a, it's a lightweight library, less than, I think, one megabyte, actually. Um, and I should mention, you don't actually need to include the SDK if you just want the send from website functionality. Um, that you can do to hook up through, through your push notification system. Um, however, if you want the full chat, if you want um, the ability for your users to chat with each other and synchronize their screens, so that as I'm playing a game with you, we can send each other you know, GIFs or uh, I mean, anything the developer wants to do by enabling two people to have the same screen. And so um, that's, that's the goal. Very cool. Uh, tell me about the company. Uh, how are you funded? How many people work there? And where are you going as a company? Sure. So uh, we were just uh, incorporated a couple months ago. Uh, we actually have a patent pending for the multi-screen functionality and synchronization. Um, you know, it's 2014 and Minority Report and other movies like it have been telling us that computers are going to get smarter and, and devices are going to be more immersive as we go along. Technology certainly advanced to a degree, but the devices that we use for the most part are relatively stupid. <laughs> you still have to tell it exactly which app you want and then you have to tell it exactly where in the app that you were before you left your computer. And so we're trying to remove several of those steps and push content or label, enable developers to more easily push content out to the screens that, that I use on a daily basis to immerse me and make the experience better. Now, some people who do syncing real well are like the Amazon Kindle team. When I read to page 49 of my book, and then hop in the car and go to Audible, it's reading from page 49. Mm -hmm. 
Is that possible using your SDK? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the kind of syncing that you're hoping developers do not just through or absolutely. So that that's a great starting point. We think though that it should go even further. So yes, I should be able to open it to the same place. What we do is take it a step further and say, well, when as soon as you switch devices, we should tell the user to open that app. We should send them a notification. Yeah. So you know, a lot of the the larger um, well-known startups brag about 60, 70 percent of their users are mobile on a monthly basis. Why isn't a why isn't it a hundred percent? And through our SDK, not only can we encourage that, but we can actually not force, but push the users to be aware that. They can open the application to the exact same place that they were. It's one tap away, and, and if they have the app open, to actually create a two screen or three or four, however many screens the developer wants to create to, to draw the user in and make them feel like they're using the app. Yeah, This is an open source, right? I, I don't get to mm -hmm. see inside your code, or do I? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. so it's, uh, not it's proprietary, source. yeah. Yep. I just wanted to check with that in case people wanted it, uh, an open source version. Uh, um, unfortunately, it's something that we're considering, but not at this time. Okay. Uh, anything else I need to know about your company or uh, about where this is going? Um, so, let's see. Um, we do have a number of partners um, that we're very excited to be working with and in the next couple months, I guess, we'll be announcing more of the details around that. But um, you know, we're we're definitely looking for new partners if people are interested. What kind of part? What do you mean by partner? Uh, so there are certainly a number of things that a developer can do. Um, you know, anything simple from Im implementing the send a phone button on their website to drive engagement. But really, the the things that we want to encourage um, are the next level types of experiences where you walk into a mall like Minority Report, and instead of scanning your eyes, you're identified through the GPS in your phone, which is then communicating back to you know, your website when you open Yelp, for example, to know instead of using my IP address, using the GPS from my phone and using the sensors back and forth to do really, really interesting, really exciting types of multi-screen experiences. And, and so if developers have ideas or are interested in discussing that, we're absolutely there to support them and, and help however we can. Very cool. Where do we get in touch with your company? GetDoubleVision.com. GetDoubleVision.com. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank coming, you. Sean. Tell me it's really cool.